All right, so this whole chapter is really about similarity. Um, next class, we'll learn how to prove that triangles are similar. Um, and today, we're just going to be uh, dealing with sort of um, the algebraic part of similar figures. So similar figures are figures that have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. What do I mean when I say not necessarily the same size? Can it be the same size? Yeah. yeah, so it has to be the same shape. It doesn't have to be the same size, but it could be the same size. So here's an always, sometimes, never for you. Right? Um, congruent figures are similar. Congruent figures are similar. Right, so congruent figures are similar. How many people say always? Congruent figures are similar. How many people say sometimes? Congruent figures are similar. How many people say never? Okay, so it seems like you've narrowed it down to an always or a sometimes. So are congruent figures the same shape? Yeah. Right. And they are the same size. Doesn't that fit the definition of similarity? So similar saying you have to be the same shape. You don't have to be the same size. Well, congruent checks off that box for similar. So congruent figures are always similar. Congruent figures are always similar. Now let's flip it. Similar figures are congruent. How many people say always? Similar figures are always congruent. Similar figures are sometimes congruent. Good, you all win. Similar figures are sometimes congruent. When would they be congruent? If that similar figure is the same shape and the same size. All right, similar polygons are polygons in which the, uh, the ratio of the measures of the corresponding sides are equal and the corresponding angles are congruent. And I'll explain to you what that means in a second. Oh, sorry. Just to um, I th piggyback on what we spoke about last class. I think last class I told you we'd have one more quiz before the end of the marking period because of... Um, Oh, I said we don't? Okay, good. I told one class we were going to, but we're not going to. Good. Glad I told you we're not. Hey, right, so given triangle ABC is similar, this is the symbol for similar. It's just a squiggly. So it's, you know how congruent is an equal sign with a squiggly? The similar is just a squiggly, no equal sign. So I'm telling you triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Just like with congruent triangles, the way the letters are written matters. It tells you which sides and angles correspond. Let's start with the angles. So if two figures are similar, their corresponding angles end up being congruent. So how do I know which angles correspond? How they're written. So angle A corresponds to angle D. That means angle A is congruent to angle D. Which angles corresponds to angle B? Which angle corresponds to angle B? What? Angle E. You got it. So angle B is congruent to angle E. And lastly, angle C and angle F have to be congruent. So angle C is congruent to angle F. So if two figures are similar, their corresponding angles are congruent. Sean? Is this why, you, is this why angle, angle, angle doesn't work to prove triangles? Exactly. This is the exact reason why angle, angle, angle does not work to prove triangles congruent. You'll actually learn next class it's a way to prove them to be similar. It's a way to prove them to be similar, not congruent. Because you can have three angles congruent to another pair of three ang uh, no, corresponding three angles, um, but their sizes are different. Right. So now the sides that correspond in similar figures, uh, they're not congruent. The sides that correspond make the same ratio. What do I mean by that? So do we agree, based on how the letters are written, that AB has to correspond to DE? So I'll highlight that in yellow. AB corresponds to DE. So now if I make a ratio of their two sides, it's going to be 8 to 4. 
And if we simplify that down, don't we agree that's two to one? So now every pair of sides that correspond, if you do their ratio, it should simplify, it should simplify down to two to one. <coughs> so here we have BC corresponds to EF. So BC corresponds to EF. If I put their sides in a ratio, isn't that again 10 to five, which simplifies down to two to one. And the last pair of sides that correspond are AC and DF. If I put those in a ratio together, we get 12 over six, which simplifies down to two over one. So when figures are similar, when two polygons are similar, the corresponding angles end up being congruent, but the corresponding sides all end up simplifying down to the same ratio. Corresponding sides all end up simplifying down to the same ratio. All right, let's jump right into an example. So now these problems are not hard. These problems are tedious though. So it's not taking a lot of brain power, but it's just gonna take a lot of writing, unfortunately. Okay, so here we have that A, B, C, D is similar to E, F, G, H. And I'm telling you that angle A is 30 degrees. All right, before we do anything, let's color code the sides that correspond. Let's color code the sides that correspond. So which side, based on the way the letters are written, which side corresponds to AB? Ever repeat us? EF. EF, so I'm gonna highlight in yellow AB and EF. They correspond to each other. All right, which side corresponds to BC, based on how the letters are written? BC corresponds to FG. FG. Thanks, Colin. So I'm going to color code those sides. So BC and FG, I highlighted in green. All right, let's keep going. Now let's look at CD. Which side, based on how the letters are written, corresponds to CD? Taylor? GH. I'm going to highlight those in blue. So CD corresponds to GH. So by process of elimination, do we all agree that A, D, and E, H will also correspond? Okay, so now when we set up these problems, remember in the last lesson I said what goes on top matters? Okay, so when we start doing these problems and we're doing a lot of algebraic work, you need to decide in the beginning of the problem which figure you want to be in the numerator, then you have to stay consistent with it the whole time. Now, in these algebraic problems, it doesn't matter unless it specifically tells you what it wants on top. Um, in this one, it doesn't tell us what it wants on top. We can just decide, but then we have to, Cam, stay with that the whole entire period, the whole entire problem. So we decide, do we want the small figure in the numerator and the big one in the denominator or the big figure in the numerator and the small one in the denominator? It's up to you. We just need to stay consistent the rest of the problem. Should we do small over big? Are you all okay with that? Okay, so when it says find the ratio of the sides, what did we decide? We're gonna do the ratio of the small side over the big side. So you pick any pair of sides that correspond. The side, the only side I have is EF for the big one. Which side corresponds to EF? AB. So when we're finding the ratio of the sides, it's going to be the small side, which is six, over the big side, which is nine. What does six over nine simplify down to? Two over three. So the ratio of the sides is two to three. Since these figures are similar, what are all the ratios of the sides that correspond to have to simplify down to? Two over three. Okay, they all have to simplify down to the same ratio. So now they want us to use this knowledge and find the missing sides. Okay, so how are we going to find FG? Well, FG corresponds to BC, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a proportion. And we got to stay consistent with what we decided. We decided small over big. So we're going to use the two sides that were given to us. So I'm going to write it out in words first or letters first. So I'm going to say segment AB 
is to segment EF, small to big, as... Now they want us to find FG. Now is FG going to go in the denominator or the numerator? Denominator, because we said bigger goes in the denominator. The bigger figure goes in the denominator. So we're going to say FG in the denominator, and the corresponding side in the numerator is BC. Now AB to EF. That's nine, oops, sorry, that's six to nine is equal to BC, which is four, and let's call FGX. That's what we're trying to find, X. Before I cross multiply, does anybody see something I can do? Before I cross multiply, does anybody see something I can do? You got it. So we're going to say 2 over 3 is equal to 4 over x. We cross multiply, we get 2x is equal to 12, so x will equal 6. All right, so we got x is equal to 6. Now we're going to do this whole process again. All right, so this time we want to find GH. We're going to go back to what was originally given to us. So remember, that's going to be AB is to EF as, now GH. GH is from the bigger figure. Is GH going in the denominator or the numerator? It's from the bigger figure. Didn't we say the bigger goes in the denominator? So this is going to be GH. And what corresponds to GH? CD. Now, do we all agree that AB over EF is 6 to 9, which is 2 to 3? So I can just jump to 2 thirds. So here we got 2 thirds is equal to CD, which is 3, over GH. Let's call that Y. So now we cross multiply. And we're going to get 2y is equal to 9 divided by 2. And we're going to get y is equal to 4.5. Not 4.5. Nobody caught that? Oh, yeah, 4.5. <laughs> there was nothing to catch. Okay, so then which side is this? GH is 4.5. All right, now we're going to find EH. So we go back to our original ratio, AB is to EF. And once again, EH is the bigger polygon, so that's going in the denominator. And that corresponds to AD. So we have 2 is to 3 as, let's call this W, um, as 7 is to W. Cross multiply, 2w is equal to 21, w will equal 10.5. All right, and the very last part in part A is saying find the measure of angle E. Well, which angle does E correspond to based on how the letters are written? Lauren? A. A. Now, when the figures are similar, the angles are not in equal ratios. The angles are what? Congruent. congruent. The angles are congruent. So if A is 30, E has to be 30. What's up, La? Um, for the, uh, like, 4.5 and 10.5, mm -hmm. could we use fractions? It doesn't have to be you could leave you could use fractions generally i would say leave it as improper the only reason i clean i change them to decimals because um in an in another problem or so we're going to be asked to add all the sides and it's just easier easier to add decimals but you could absolutely leave it as fractions all right we ready all right so that's part a 
So, oh, right here, this is what I was talking about. Find the ratio of perimeter A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H. Is it telling us which one it wants on top? Yeah, how do I know which one it wants on top? Lauren? The first one? Yeah, whatever's written first has to be on top. So find the ratio of perimeter A, B, C, D to the perimeter of E, F, G, H. Whatever's written first has to be on top. So we want perimeter of A, B, C, D to the perimeter of E, F, G, H. How do we find perimeters again? What do we do? Add up all the sides. So let's go back. A, B, C, D. 6 plus 4 is 10. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 plus 10 is... 20. Now we want the perimeter of E, F, G, H. All right, um, I'm going to leave off the fractions right now. 6 plus 4 is 10. And then 10 plus 9 is 19. A half and a half is a whole, right? So it is, what'd you say? 40? No. 30. 30, good. What does 20 over 30 simplify down to? Two-thirds. Where else have we seen two-thirds before? The ratio of the sides. Do you think that's a coincidence? No. no, it's not a coincidence. Anytime you have similar figures, the ratio of the sides is the same ratio as the ratio of the perimeters and vice versa. The ratio of the perimeters is the same as the ratio of the sides. So is that like a way to check if you're right? Uh, yeah. All right, so theorem, the ratio of perimeters of two similar polygons equals, this should say the ratio of a pair of corresponding sides. Any, not a pair. Oh, of any pair. Same thing. Thanks. We ready? Yeah. Okay. So now, again, I'm giving you similar figures. I need us to color code the sides that match up with each other. So you tell me who matches up with ML. Who corresponds to ML, Victoria? PQ. PQ. All right, which side corresponds to LN? QR. You got it, QR. And then lastly, PR and MN will correspond as well. All right, so if you notice in triangle MLN, I have angle M is 55. If angle M is 55, which other angle in the other triangle has to be 55? P has to be 55. And then angle L is 90, which means which angle has to be 90? Nope, look at how the letters are written. L corresponds to? Q, it goes by how the letters are written. So Q is 90. Can we find N and R? Yeah, how? You got it. And what's that going to be? 35. All right. So we want to find N. We already found that, 35. P is 55 and Q is 90. We got all of those. All right, we now need to find X and Y. Here's X right here. This is QR, that's X. The way we're going to find X and Y is we need to set up proportions. So we got to decide right now, do we want big triangle over small triangle or small triangle over big triangle? We decide and then we use the whole problem sticking with that. 
what do you guys want to do? Small triangle over big or big over small? Small over big. So we're going to, our ratio will be small triangle over big triangle. So now that I decided that, I got to stick with this the whole time. All right, so we're going to pick two sides that match up that both have numbers. What two sides match up and both have numbers? Ever, Pitas? Um, Good. We have 3 and we have 15. Which one am I putting on top based on what I had decided? 3. three. So we're 3 over 15, which simplifies down to 1 over 5. Okay. So now we want to find x. Who does x, or so where should I put x? In the numerator or the denominator? Denominator, because we said big triangle in the denominator. Which side corresponds to x? Which side corresponds to x in the other triangle? Four. Four. That's going in the numerator. Are we okay so far? All right, cross multiply. You're going to get x is equal to? 20. All right, now we're going to do the same thing to find y. So I'm going to go back to my 3 over 15 or my 1 over 5. Always go back to the two sides that were given to us. Always go back to the two sides that were given to us. And now y, that's part of the big triangle. Since y is part of the big triangle, am I putting that in the denominator or the numerator? Denominator, because we said big triangle in the denominator. Which side in the, in the small triangle corresponds to y? Five. You got it. So now we cross multiply, and we're going to end up getting y is equal to 25. What's the ratio of the sides? Not Zia, somebody else. What's the ratio of the sides? Not Victoria, somebody else. What's the ratio of the sides? Ever, Pitas? 12 over 60. Oh, no. Not the perimeters. Not the perimeters, just the ratio of the sides. So when I ask for the ratio of the sides, all you do is pair up a pair of corresponding sides and put them in a fraction. Cam? One fifth. One fifth, right? Isn't that what we've been using, 3 over 15, and they all have to simplify down to that? So the ratio of the sides, small over big, is 1 to 5. If the ratio of the sides is 1 to 5, what is the ratio of the perimeters also has to have to be? The same as the sides, which is 1 to 5. Y'all are awfully quiet. I don't know if you're awfully quiet because this is too easy or if you're awfully quiet because this is too hard. We're just focused. We're really focused. Just, okay. All right. So now I'm not telling you which sides. I'm, I'm not telling you um, which sides match up. I am telling you that these two triangles are similar, but we need to figure out which sides and which angles correspond to each other. So how are we going to do that? Well, they're telling us that AB is parallel to DE. So AB parallel to DE. And if AB is parallel to DE, do you all see the Z's going on over here? All right, so what does that mean? That means angle A is congruent to angle E. And then isn't there another Z? So angle B is congruent to angle D. And don't we see the two vertical angles right here? I'll call them 1 and 2. Angle 1 congruent to angle 2. OK. So now I'm going to color code the sides that correspond. And the way I know which sides correspond is by the angle markings. Do you all see how from A to C, it's a loop with a slash to just a loop. So AC is going to correspond to the side in the other triangle that has a loop with a slash to just a loop. Which side in the other triangle has a loop with a slash to just a loop? 
EC. These are the sides that correspond. AC does not correspond to DC. AC corresponds to EC. This is a big deal. All right, which side corresponds to AB? So we have a loop with two slashes to a loop with one slash. Which side corresponds to AB? Pam? You got it. And then, so lastly, BC and DC will also correspond to each other. So now when I write the letters to match them up of the second triangle, the first triangle went from A, started off with A, which angle corresponds to A? Look at your markings. E, good. Which angle corresponds to C? C. And which angle corresponds to B? D. All right, so now we need to find X and Y. Here's Y, I circled it. Here's X, I boxed it. All right, we need to find X and Y. We're going to set up a proportion. We have to decide which triangle do we want on top. Do we want top triangle over bottom triangle or bottom triangle over top triangle? Do we want to do top triangle over bottom triangle? All right, so once we decide, do we have to stay consistent with this the whole time? Yes. All right, so we're going to pick two sides that correspond that both have numbers. Which two sides correspond and both have numbers? Lucas. You got it. So I'm going to do 12 over 8. But what can I do with 12 over 8? Divide by 4, and then we're going to get 3 over 2. So now we're going to have 3 over 2, and I need to find x. Is x going to go on the denominator or the numerator? x in denominator or numerator? Denominator. denominator. Which side corresponds to x and will go in the numerator? What number? Victoria? 6. 6, thank you. All right, so now let's cross multiply. We're going to get 3x is equal to 12, so x will equal 4. So we got x is equal to 4. All right, now we want to find y. All right, so again, we're going to pick the two sides that have numbers from the beginning. Wasn't that 12 over 8? And didn't we say 12 over 8 reduces down to 3 over 2? All right, now why? Is that going in the numerator or the denominator? The denominator, because we said bottom triangle and the denominator. Who corresponds to y? What number corresponds to y and will go in the numerator? Lucas? 9. Nine. Cross multiply, we get 3y is equal to 18, so y will equal 6. All right, what is the ratio of the sides? What is the ratio of the sides? Victoria? Three to two. If the ratio of the sides is three to two, what's the ratio of the perimeters? Also, three to two. All right, I think we're almost done here. A rectangle has sides 4 and 10. If a similar rectangle has a perimeter of 70, find the length of the longer side. All right, so we're talking, I repeat this. I have a question for you. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, is it possible? Like, I got 8 over 12 and 75 and 2 thirds. Yeah, so um, that means you did bottom over top. So as long as you stayed consistent, you should have gotten all the same answers as me. So four over four, uh, four and six, and then instead of three halves, you would have been two thirds, two thirds. Yeah. Yep. But, um, for like, you know, why I got thirteen point five. For why? Yeah. Can you tell me um, what your proportion was for why? I did two thirds. That's your problem. So nine. So your you did um, bottom triangle over top triangle, right? 
All right, so that nine belongs to the top triangle. So that nine should have gone in the denominator if you're doing two over three, and then the Y should have gone in the numerator. So that's why I said, choose, write it down, what you wanna do, like top over bottom or bottom over top, and stay consistent with it the whole time unless you'll get the wrong answer. Okay, let's go to example five. So it says a rectangle has sides four and 10. If a similar rectangle has a perimeter of 70, find the length of the longer side. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna draw two rectangles. And these two rectangles should be similar. So it says a rectangle has one side four and one side 10. So one is four and one is 10. And then the other similar rectangle doesn't have any side lengths, but it has a perimeter of 70. This is a great test question, by the way. This would be a great test question. So now, think back to a rectangle. What do we know about opposite sides of a rectangle, Cam? They're congruent. So if the top is four, as the, the top is ten, the bottom's ten. If the left is four, the right is four. So what's this perimeter? Twenty-eight. Now they said find the length of the longer side. Do we agree? The longer side of the second rectangle will correspond to the longer side of the first rectangle. So I'm gonna call this X. That's what we wanna find. Now, because they're similar, we need to set up a proportion. So what do we wanna do? We're gonna do first rectangle over second rectangle. Stay consistent. So now the first rectangle is 10, has the side length of 10. The second rectangle has a side length of X. Are we all okay with this fraction, what, how I set that up? Okay, so now we wanna look to make another ratio, but I don't have any other sides. But what do I have? There perimeters isn't the ratio of the perimeters the same as the ratio of the sides so what am I going to do 28 over 70 I can reduce 28 over 70 because I can divide top and bottom by 7 so then we're going to have 10 over x is equal to 4 over 10 cross multiply we get 4x is equal to 100 so x is equal to 25. Okay, um, let's keep going. I think we're going to skip number six. Let's go to number seven. No, we'll do number six and then we'll call it a day. Okay. So given triangle ABC is similar to DEF, let's mark the angles that correspond. So angle A does not correspond to angle F. I'm gonna try to trick you. Which angle does angle A correspond to? D, how do you know that? Because of the order the letters are written. So A corresponds to D. All right, B corresponds to? E, good, and C corresponds to F. All right, so we want to first find angle C. Easy peasy, right? A triangle adds up to 180. So what is the measure of angle C? 75, good. So that means angle F is also 75. All right, now we want to find angle D. Well, angle D is the same as angle A, so angle D has to be how many degrees? 60. And angle E is the same as angle B, so angle E has to be 45. Now we want to find X. Well, do we agree right here? E is 5x, but it's also 45. So what's my equation? 5x 
equals 45. So x will equal 9. Then we want to find y. Well, look here. Angle D is 3y, but it's also 60. So our equation is 3y equals 60. So y is equal to 20. All right, now the last part. It says find what 2x plus y is. Well, x is 9, so this is 2 times 9 plus 20. 18 plus 20 is 38. All right, we are done for today.